On Netflix, I saw another historical film called Rip Hagen, who honoured his name because he ripped the jaywalkers of their savings before sending them to the concentration camps, as to rip, like in his name, Rip Hagen. Why did this story arouse my interest other than his name? Well, because the Swiss octogon is as usual deeply involved in this Nazi affair. His name was Andres Rip Hagen, who worked for the Dutch Nazi authorities of the Dutch people, massively collaborating with the Germans. And having several SS divisions like the 23rd Panzer Grenadier Division Netherlands, with a square and compass in its logo, with an obvious big square and the two downward triangles for the concept of three, thus representing the compass as well. So here you see the big square, eh? so it's all, all the initiated, they see square and compass. Eh? And this is the triangle two times, the downward triangle for death, like they had in Auschwitz <coughs> and the concentration camps. It's the concept of three, and the concept there are three corners in it, eh? and the concept of three is stands for the compass. So all the initiated ones, they read square and compass. It was all led by Pharaoh's Freemasonry, the whole war. And the Dutch had the 34th SS Grenadier Division Landstorm Netherlands with a black Swiss cross in the middle of their logo and at its sides an upward pyramid and the downward pyramid of death. So here you can see the Swiss cross here in the middle in black. Uh, here's the downward pyramid of death. So here you can see the concentration camp inmates with the downward pyramid of death on their tunics and the same pyramid of death, the downward pyramid of death, you can find in a lot of places. And here at, in the logos of the, of the two Dutch SS Nazi divisions. Don't you think this is a coincidence? Eh? And these times are coming up now again, eh? very soon. Altogether, the Dutch had about 25,000 Dutch Nazis in the SS, killing men, women and children in Eastern Europe. While the Dutch royal pharaohs and their SS Nazi Prince Bernhard of the Bilderberger left for safe England, having a jolly good time in Merry England, meeting old friends like Ian Fleming, Alistair Crowley and other Satanists. So Andres Rip Hagen worked for the Dutch Nazis, rounding up jaywalker families for the concentration camps. But as he was a good Dutch businessman, not without stealing all their savings, by using a very sly combination of lies, pretending to be forced by the Germans to do this, offering the jaywalkers his protection and saving their savings and valuables, just stalling their de deportation with a few weeks to win their trust, until he had them ripped off all they had. An absolutely ruthless and diabolical Dutch businessman. So also in this respect, the Dutch and the South African Boers are very different, in spite of the language and names in common. And that's why the Dutch don't really care about the farm murders in South Africa nor did they care about British concentration camps during the Boer Wars 100 years ago. The Rip Hagen case is interesting because he was part of the Swiss Octagon organization, the top of the Nazi Templars, going in and out Switzerland, no problem, deposit his personal Nazi gold in a Swiss bank and even died in 1973 in Montreux, Switzerland. You can read that here. He died May 13th in 1973 in Montreux, Switzerland. Yeah, 
The Dutch authorities issued an arrest warrant and bounty on Rip Hagen in 1988. Well, that's a bit late, eh? But it was later discovered that he already died at a Swiss private clinic in Montreux in 1973. The Swiss Nazi clinic was called, and still is called, La Prairie, which almost sounds like La Priori des Templiers, as in the Priory of Sion of the Knights Templars where they are specialised in longevity procedures since 1931, of which the gardener also told me about that they sell the youth elixir there, which I explain in this video here on, my other, on one of my other channels, Homey Land Security. So here's the title, just punch it in. And here you can see the garden top view of the Swiss Nazi Templar Youth Elixir Clinic, with part of the castle showing top left. Now don't you all think the specially designed configuration of the garden looks a bit familiar, apart from the big pharaonic sun hieroglyph? Well, of course it does, being a true joy to the heart with all those prominent Nazis prolonging their lives there, getting injected with the embryonic youth elixir, and then have a stroll in the garden in a comforting and atmosphere in the motherland, and all the Nazi Templar details recollecting good old memories of victory over mankind with good old friends. They were all there in this Nazi clinic of Switzerland. Dr. Mengele, Rip Hagen, Eichmann, Klaus Barbie, and even Adolf Hitler, before and after the war. Rip Hagen even lived in the US for two years, around 1923, where he worked for Standard Oil and where he made many contacts with the Mafia. After the war in 1945, Rip Hagen got all the help of the Dutch BNV Secret Service. The BNV Bureau for National Safety, helping a terrible Nazi mass murderer get away and escape to their base in the Alps, Octogon. From where on, he took the Nazi red line to Spain and then, in 1948, to Argentina, where he got total backup by his personal Nazi pal, the Argentinian dictator Juan Perón, or Per On, of the House of Osiris. Now, how come the Netherlands, being a country full of Nazi traitors and collaborators, apart from the fact that the Dutchman likes to do some good business, no matter with whom or with what? like the actual drug trade of the lowlands, for instance. And this one here, I suppose he was Dutch as well, Henry Detterding, he died also in Switzerland, in St. Morris. He was knighted by the British in 1920, and he was the head of Royal Dutch Shell Petrol. And he was a personal friend of Mr. Hitler. You see, they all die in St. Moritz in Switzerland, in the Alps, in their base, and they all go to that clinic, La Prairie. So here you can see Henry Detterding. He was born in Amsterdam, so he was Dutch, and he was a knight command, a knight commander, a Templars of the Order of the British Empire. Here, Standard Oil. You know, didn't a Rip Hagen, didn't he work for two years for Standard Oil, eh? They all go to Switzerland. How come, eh? And you can see Sir Henry uh, together with his pal Adolf Hitler. Uh, they're all one bunch. And as I told you, you know, World War II could start. I made that film about it. As in 1938, uh, they found, they did a, the biggest discovery of the biggest well in Saudi Arabia. And that was it. That was the starting signal of World War II. 
um, the next day, or, or yeah, I think it was the next day they um, annexed uh, Austria when that was discovered. And um, it's all one bunch. They're multinational. It's all Nazi Templars connected to Switzerland. And this Nazi crook, he was also a pal of General Franco of uh, Il Duce, the Duke, Benito Mussolini, you know, who, who said, make America great again. And it's all royal, royal shell. It's the aristocracy. And this is where you get your, uh, your gallon of uh, petrol from, from the gas for your car. This is where you get it from, from the Nazis. And they pull 95% um, taxes over it, like here in Europe. There's also another reason for the Dutch massively collaborating with the Nazis, which has to be dug out out of history. And I talk about that in this film, because it is also related to the founding of South Africa in 1652. As the Thirty Year War had ended in 1648, so right after the murderous Swiss mercenaries had nothing to do anymore. Consequently, 150,000 Swiss mercs serving for the Dutch King's Royal Army, who later on became the police. And the Dutch BNV Secret Service also helped Dutch Nazi war criminals escape to the motherland of Octogon in the Alps, like the mass murderer Andres Riphagen. Also, ten, tens of thousands of Swiss mercs served in the VOC Royal Business Fleet with a Templars V and an O for the circle for compass in their logo. Here you can see that. 150,000 Swiss served in Swiss regiments in the Netherlands. Yeah, it started from 1693. And 16,000 who served the VOC, that's the East Indie Companies, extremely rich, multinationals. Uh, they laid the base, you know, for a lot of multinational companies. And it's all royal stuff, right? Yeah, so here's the title of that film, just punch it in, here you can read. Secondly, the Swiss had a strong tradition of military service in the Netherlands, which was formalized by a treaty in 1693. By 1694, more than 5,000 Swiss were serving in the Netherlands. They became the police, and that's why this horrible war criminal of Octogon, the Andres Riphagen, he got all the support, you know, to, to escape to Switzerland. These are very old orders, it's been going on for thousands of years, and the only way to understand it is to dig into history. Here in Wikipedia, under Swiss mercenaries, you can see how the Swiss mercenaries, they served everywhere in the colonies, in England, in here says France, Spanish, and here's a chapter in the Dutch army. So I'll show that in a minute. So they're not at all a peaceful people and as they presented, you know, and they had Swiss guards like everywhere, you know, and they became the police and the police are still working for the elite only and for the royals for Pharaoh, they're not working for you. And this is where it came from. There's still Swiss mercenaries all over the world. So here you can see it, service in the Dutch army. I already made that film about it, which I showed you. And I had a very long, um, I had two two hours documentaries on this in my, on my channel, Gure, so I'm not gonna do it again. These videos are gone forever. And so I'll let you read it yourself. I don't want to do it again. Eh? So here's in the service, service in the British Army, even the Swiss Guards, they were in the Swiss Merc Mercs, they were there. That's why the, um, the guy of uh, Executive Outcome, Simon Mann, I don't say man because it's German with double N, Simon Mann, Mann, he, um, um, he was in the SAS, who are royal killers, and... Um, that's why he had his uh, mercenary company, Executive Outcome. This is where it started. 
It's all, he has a Swiss German name, Mann. And also the Swiss guards, they were everywhere. Every country, every king, they all had a Swiss guard who became the police and the secret service and the CIA. It's all, this is all octogon. So, it, I'll, well, I'll let you read it yourself, right? So, also for the slave trade, they, um, here the Dutch slave trade, they, the Dutch really started it. Well, that's not the people doing it, but it's the aristocracy, eh? the royals. And they, uh, <coughs> they use Swiss mercenaries for this as well. And that's why uh, all the ships, they belong to the, um, most of the slave trade ships, they belong to the Swiss because that's their base. So you can read about the Dutch uh, slave trade. So they had the, the, um, the VOC, the East Indies Company, and they also had the West Indies Company uh, here, the Dutch West India Company. And this is their logo. And um, so that's why all the ships, they belong to the Swiss, which I explain in this video here. I had a much larger video too. I had two two hour documentaries about this, but the Swiss are very powerful. They managed to take it off, of course. Hey? And how is it possible? You know, a country that doesn't even have a, a connection to the sea, that all the slave trader ships belong to them. Well, <clears throat> Because the Knights Templars, they had a very big fleet, like the pirates with the skull and bones Freemason logo fighting uh, like against the English king because they wanted the, the new world order, the horizontal rule. There's some more Swiss soldiers in Dutch military service. And this is why the Dutch police and the Dutch authorities, they collaborated with the Nazis and they helped this uh, uh, address Rip Hagen escape to Switzerland <laughs> because it's all Swiss, eh? And they're all in the service of the royals. And this is why today's police, they act against the people and for the royals and for the masters pharaoh yeah one million mercenaries swiss soldiers one million swiss mercenaries yeah swiss troops in dutch service and there was the regiment de meuron they were everywhere and they took away our liberties you know for the royals and they rule over the us cia everything everything is octogon and this one I could only find in German, Schweizer Truppen in the Niederländischen Diensten. And here's the VOC, you see the Templars V in it. Hey? There was a Templars fleet hey? and the O here. These are the Pharaonic colors, red, white, and blue. Red for the old world order, white for the new world order, horizontal rule, and blue for the war color. I explained it in my film, The Swiss Beast, Home of the Devil. Yeah, the lion. We never had any lions in Europe. You know, we're being ruled by a foreign power from the Middle East. Here it says only in German here. Yeah, die Schweiz, you know, that means Switzerland. That Switzerland never had any colonies, but they helped everywhere to knock down um, uh, slave revolts by the slaves uh, rising up in Africa, in, here it says, in, Gin, in, in, in Guyana, Guinea, for Holland, for the Dutch, in Suriname, in, in, in Indonesia, everywhere they did it. So you think it stopped, they stopped doing it, you know, and they were not there anymore all of a sudden when Second World War and Andres Rip Hagen was there and all that. They they were not there anymore, eh? No, of course not. They were still doing the same thing. So it's not really a miracle why the um, the Dutch police and the Dutch authorities uh, were collaborating with the Nazis because um, they're all Swiss, serving the Lords and serving the the Knights Templars. It's octagon. And now they put all the slaves together, you know, 
the black slaves together with the white slaves together with the arab slaves with the muslim slaves and the asian slaves we're all in the same sh slave ship now eh? we're all together in one slave ship now look the swiss are everywhere they even call it the diaspora yeah swiss americans one million yeah, in Argentine, Argentina, well, of course, eh? Nazis, 300,000 everywhere. Canada, almost 150,000 Swiss Americans. And they take all key positions, you know, octagon. So the statistics I just showed you, that was from Wikipedia Swiss Abroad. They call it the fifth Switzerland, the fünfte Schweiz. Yeah, they call it the Swiss diaspora, and it's real, folks. It's very real. And another step later on in history, there were tens of thousands of Swiss mercenaries in the Dutch colonial army, the Knil, killing the indigenous Indonesians for the king's profitable East Indies company, VOC Business with, as usual, the notorious Swiss mercs doing terrible massacres, wiping out entire villages, as you can see here in the picture. And as you can see here in the next picture of 1904, with the children sitting and crying next to their murdered parents, just as Swissy did 40 years later in the Nazi concentration camps. So this text here is in Indonesian and this guy here with a Templar's cross on his, uh, with a crown and all that on his, uh, on his chest, eh? His name is uh, Gottfried and Gottfried, it's not Dutch or, you know, it is uh, Swiss German. Fried, it's from Friede, it means peace and God is God. So here you can see a Swissy you know, and they have been, you know, working for the king and all that and the VOC f since hundreds of years. So here you can see Swiss, he already changed his name into uh, a Dutch name here. But he is Swiss, you can still see it on his name. Eh? And he did terrible massacres in, uh, in Indonesia and the colonies. So here you can see some more terrible massacres Swiss he did in the colonies. All this comes out of the Knights Templars and their base Octogon in the Alps, all out of the worldwide nobility. That the Dutch police in the Andres Riphagen case collaborated with the Nazis because they actually have their own continuous bloodlines coming out of the Swiss mercenaries under Templar command still today like the notorious South African Mercs and their English director of executive outcome, Simon Mann, with an unusual Swiss German name for an Englishman. These are the killer bloodlines. And there is the pharaonic word Mer for pyramid, as in Mercenaire, mercenary. The Pyramid Wars to bury all the butchered souls in there. And look how this guy could easily pass for a Swiss banker. This is what makes them so dangerous, the Swiss. So the only way to understand today's mercenaries and that there is an English director of the mercenaries called Simon Munn with a Swiss German name is not man in English with one hand, but it's man. And the only way to understand this is to dig into history and to know, for instance, that there was a British Swiss Legion and they all came out of the Palatines. So go watch this film here as well on my channel, Gatsefrats, and look at their logo of the British Swiss Legion. It has a crown, for the old world's order, which is red. Then there is octagon here, it's octagonal, the star. For blue, the war crown, they do the, the killings eh, out of the Knights Templars. And then there is Swaziland, 
which stands for the New World Order, as Switzerland since 1291 was the first New World Order horizontal rule in the world. So this stands for white. So remember this carefully because I'm going to show that to you in the next picture. This is red, the old world order. This is blue, octagon. And this is white, the new world order. Just remember that carefully. So there it is again, this symbol. Here it is. So watch it carefully because it means exactly the same as the logo of the Swiss, the Swiss British Legion. And these pure pharaohs went always skiing in Klosters, Switzerland, the base of Pharaoh, where the entire pharaonic elite and their Nazi war criminals and Swiss Pontius Pilatus Christ killers get together. Therefore, the logo on the Royal Squadron airplane has a blue outer circle for the war, the war crown. Who defend the constitution? of the Templars New World Order Horizontal Rule in white and it all come out of the red inner circle of the Pertasser, the Red House Old World Order of the Pharaoh's aristocracy. This is the outer defense line, the blue war crown. This is the constitution here in white, the new world order by the, by the Templars. And this is the old world order of Pharaoh's aristocracy, the vertical rule in the middle, where it all comes from. So the first line of defense is octagon and like the, the Swiss, the Swiss British Legion and mercenaries and everything. Then the second line of defense is the, is the state. Uh, this is the state, yeah. And in the in the middle is this. The the core of it all, and their base is Switzerland. I remember I said to Diana once that there is Lady Park her balls in fuck, fucking him palace, doing the wordsmith once again. This enemy is a very ancient enemy from the beginning of time, Pharaoh. So here you see Rip Hagen. The title is Rip Hagen, the Untouchable. Here you see him together with the Dutch Nazi police during the war. And now you know through the information I just gave you why he was untouchable and why the Dutch Nazi police, they worked together with the Nazis because it's a bloodline from the, the Swiss mercenaries. It's octagon and it goes on and it goes on. Right? They, they will do it again tomorrow, you know, and it might be happening tomorrow with all the things that's going on. So the only way to understand this all why this guy here got protected by all these uniformed gangsters here and where it really comes from and where they really work for. Another Swissy killer whom I had forgotten about until a commenter recently reminded me about him. That was the governor of Judea from 26 to 36, Pontius Pilatus of which I remembered after the comment how I even went there 10 years ago to the place in Switzerland where Pilatus lived and died in Lucerne. I even filmed and uploaded the footage on my deleted channel Gure. This is what they do, right? And always come back to their base in the Alps after their murders, mass murders and genocides just as the Nazis did and all went back to save Switzerland in 1945. And this has been going on for thousands of years and will go on forever if we the people won't stop them. Because all our governments is them and Swissy ruled, Swissy financed and Swissy executed. So here it says Mountain Pilatus is full of myths and legends 
It said it was named after Pontius Pilate, fifth prefect of Judea province in Roman Empire under Tiberius. He agreed to condemn Jesus Christ to crucifixion. Due to some accounts, Pilatus, well, etc., etc. There are many legends, but I mean, there's uh, people say it over there, and there's a reason, you know, that they call the mountain like that. Eh? I mean, why, why do you call a mountain like in honor of this terrible killer who killed Christ? Eh? There must be a, an awful evil reason behind that. So, I mean, for Pontius Pilatus, why go live in some Swiss chalet or villa and eventually die there if Pilatus was not from the Roman top province in the Alps himself? And we all know that Pontius Pilatus condemned Jesus Christ to be crucified alive. Swissy killed Chrissy. Pharaoh, Pharisee, Swissy and the murderous Romans killed Christ with all the Christians believing Pharaoh's propaganda, that the jaywalkers did it. Whereas the Christians themselves became the biggest killers in history. Within two bloody world wars, millions of Christians killing millions of other Christians. They see the splinter in someone else's eye, but not the log in their own eyes. As the follower of my videos, Kids Kids, recently commented, I've been waiting all my life for a Christian to show me where Jesus told them to kill him, then drink his blood, and afterwards start a lawless cult around that. I couldn't have said it better, bro. I'd like to add to that that the symbol of Chrissy on the cross is nothing else than the symbol of man nailed upon a cross. He can't move his nailed feet and run away. By law, he's not allowed to defend himself with hands nailed on the wood. He can only nod and shake his head and say, yes, darling, no, darling. As another follower recently commented, women think that the state's authorities is their daddy and man a mere sperm donor. And I'd like to add to that, the males are beaten down by the system and females feel the states provide them the security that used to be the traditional role of the man. And it says here in the picture, we believe that people willing to trade their freedom for temporary security deserve neither and will lose both. I got my name Gure 22 years ago in the French Cathar castle, Keribus, of the Albigensians or the Cathars, where I got the name of the savior too. So here you can see this, it's my old channel, Gure, here and here. It's gone. Hundreds of videos, it's all gone. It still puzzles me how I got that name, Gure, and some other information there in that castle. And Gure sounds like the Aramaic Hebrew name, Gyura, the stranger, which I am. And I filmed it seven years ago when I slept again in that castle, but YouTube censorship took it off with the entire channel called Gure. So you all see the Swiss crosses here, eh? In blue for the war. Why do you think these Swiss crosses are here? So the local Swiss say that Pontius Pilatus lived in Luzerne, Switzerland. And I even filmed tourist shields in Luzerne indicating this. And as the Swiss honor each and every one of their heroes and mass murderers, they called the entire mountain overlooking Luzerne after the Swiss Christ killer, the Pontius Pilatus mountain, where Swizzy has another one of their killer heroes, also called the poor man's genocide plane, about which I made this video here seven years ago. So here's the title, you can punch it in. 
the Pilatus airplane is relatively inexpensive for a military ground attack airplane compared to a US A-10 Warthog or Apache helicopter. So during the Darfur genocide of 2003 by the Caliphate in Sudan and the authorities buying the Swiss Pilatus aircraft with bomb wrecks and missile attachment already fitted on the airplane, afterwards buying the ready-to-fit bombs and missiles in a neighbouring Middle Eastern state, thus avoiding all arms embargoes. Oh, clever Swiss. I mean, why would anybody name an airplane after the man who killed Christ? A question to which all Swiss know the answer. Here, look at the corona maps of the countries around Switzerland and decide for yourself. In Italy, all the heavy corona cases are in Lombardy, in the north of Italy, next to the Swiss border. And in France too, all the heavy corona cases are in the east, in Alsace, also next to the Swiss border. So here's Alsace, here's Switzerland here. It's all next to the Swiss border. I'll show you Germany too. And in Germany too, all the heavy corona cases are in the south next to the Swiss border. So here's Switzerland here, and this is the south of Germany. So the same story for all the countries. It's all next to the Swiss border. What's going on? And also in Austria, the same thing. All the heavy corona cases, most of them are in the west next to the Swiss border. So all four neighbouring countries to Switzerland, they all have most corona cases next to the Swiss border. As if Swissy drove over the border, dropped the germs, drove back and closed their own border. Therefore, comparatively, not much corona going on in Switzerland and no lockdown at all. Hey, Swissy. So watch this film here, here's the title, and uh, for the information about Novartis doing Virex experiments on guinea pigs. And did you know who invented, for the most part, the widely discussed corona medicine, hydroxychloroquine? E.G. Farben did in 1934, the same company that invented Zyklon B, a weed killer for the jaywalkers. So I.G. Farben invented chloroquine, which got improved into hydroxychloroquine in 1945. Only as they want to hide the name E.G. Farben out of business priorities, they say Bayer invented chloroquine which is their new name, as criminals change names and aliases all the time, which is a common criminal practice. IG Farben, Industriegesellschaft Farben, changed their name into Bayer in 1951, roughly 20 years later. And as the first Nazi concentration camp, KZ Nora, opened on March 3rd, 1933, one year before the IG Farben chloroquine invention. No doubt today's corona medicine has been tested on Nazi concentration camp inmates. So here it says the hydroxychloroquine and the Plaquenil, the brand name, um, if people react too sensitive to chloroquine, that's why they invented the hydroxychloroquine. So it's basically chloroquine. That's the bit. That's the biggest part of that invention. And they just uh, added some stuff to it, like. So this is uh, chloroquine, which is actually the uh, the basics of hydroxychloroquine. Most of the hydroxychloroquine is just chloroquine. And you get serious side effects, including problems with vision, muscle damage, seizure, low blood cell levels, and heart problems. 
and the the the, the last part quine chloroquine it comes from the word quinine because that's where it basically comes from the malaria product so here is quinine here against malaria so it's it's actually hydroxyquin or hydroxy um, chloro um, quinine the last part hydroxychloroquine so this is the guy hans anders Zak, who uh, invented chloroquine it says while working for Bayer AG well that's not Bayer at the time it was called a um, e IG Farben he discovered chloroquine but of course it's not good for business so they hide it you know a bunch of liars and the guy died he only got 53 years old so you see you better not take any medicines you know you grow older if you don't if you don't take any of it that's the proof of it so here you can see Bayer, they were founded in 1863. They proudly say 156 years ago. But they don't say that here, that in the meantime, in 1925, Bayer was one of the six chemical companies that merged to form IG Farben. So they disappeared and became IG Farben until 1951 and then they became um, from IG Farben disappeared again and they became uh, Bayer how here it says 1951 it was split into six constituent companies in 1951 then split again into three Bas F Bayer and Hearst yeah the Allied Control Council seed IG Farben after World War II because its role in the Nazi war effort and involvement in the Holocaust, which included using slave labor from concentration camps and the purchase of human for dangerous medical testing. And it was split again in 1951. So they're just changing names, you know, Bayer became IG Farben and IG Farben became Bayer again. It's the same as hydroxychloroquine actually is chloroquine, just changing names all the time to confuse you. And they want to be forgotten for the things, for the ugly things they did. And the next ugly things, you know, you will, we will see in history is what hydroxychloroquine probably did. Because they're going to force the vaccinations and everything. And here, two Swiss company logos, a Yugoslav Muslim sent me, who got woken up through my videos. First, the Swiss national SBB railway company changing its logos over the years from octagon wings to square and compass zodiac killer logo to Templar's cross. If you focus on the red triangles with squares and triangles concept of four and three. So here you got their older logos. Here has an octagon in the middle and the wings of Ma'at. And here later on in in history, I can't read the the year, but there is this one is this there are four squares in it. This is a square and this one. And the circle is the compass. So it reads square and compass. And here it's got the concept of three here in the wings. One, two, three. So it's the same logo as in the Swiss Zodiac watches and the Zodiac Killer. Even the uh, the Swiss railway, they had it. So now they have this one here. Well, this is a square. It's 90 degrees. And this too, there's a square here. And if you focus only on the red triangles here, it looks like a Templar's cross. And the tri this is the square for the concept of four. And the triangle is the concept of three for the um, reference to the um, to the compass so it really says square and compass in the templars colors red and white and here the swiss digitech company logo in the pharaonic colors red white and blue and a red triangle pyramid for the concept of three and d being the fourth letter in the alphabet 
concept of three and the concept of four for square and compounds. A. Swiss A.